She always knew Charles Lakes would be an Olympic gymnast. Well, it would have to be a, a virtual disaster for him to lose his top spot. Far and away, he has been the best American gymnast here in Salt Lake. And he works with such tremendous abandon. Sometimes he misses, but he always goes for it. Now watch his release moves. All right, coming up. Look at the distance between Charles and the bar. Ooh, yeah. There it is again. He just hangs it out there a mile. And with such great style. It's as if he wanted to make sure there was no doubt as to who the top man in Salt Lake City is. Charles Lakes bringing the crowd to its feet, and that's something he loves to do. And he will be the first black gymnast to represent this country at an Olympic Games. He only needed a 9.55 to beat Scott Johnson for the number one position, and he should have that easily. And Charles works the bar so hard. Watch this. On his front re-catch, goes clear out of sight. Watch the bar, too. He flexes the bar so much. Now, remember, he's got one more release. A Tukachov. Again, completely out of sight. He has pushed it beyond the limit. He only needed a 9.55 to beat Scott Johnson. And these judges who have been a little tough through the course of these trials give him a 9.95, which is the best score by any gymnast to perform so far. And yes, the Great Lakes Fan Club may have known it all along and they're happy, but more importantly, that's his mom. And she's beyond happy. Meanwhile, the last three men whose position on the team it is to win or lose are coming up. This is the last routine at the Olympic trials for 22-year-old Kevin Davis, recently a graduate of Nebraska, in third place after the fifth rotation. He can finish no higher than third, but of course there's always the threat of losing ground. But Kevin has certainly been looking forward to this competition. He's known all year, I think, that he had a strong chance to be on this team, and I think that he's in exactly the position he hoped he'd be in. Okay. And you can hear the exclamations of what should be the future Olympic teammates of Kevin Davis. Meanwhile, on the high bar, Dan Hayden. And he just simply must avoid major mistakes. And he has the most unique release move in the meet. Watch this, the back summy over the top of the bar. Oh, no, exactly what he can't have. Now he has up to 30 seconds to get himself together. Tim Daggett trying to keep calm on the sidelines with Yafim Furman, the gymnastics coach, and Dennis Hayden, who has fallen completely out of the picture. Back up he goes. Now remember, that's a five-tenths deduction, and he has no release move now in his routine. Now he's gonna, he's gonna try it again. Here it comes again, back somebody over the... Oh! Did he have to try it again? Well, Al, he has no release move. It's a major deduction if he doesn't have that requirement in his routine. But of course, missing it twice now, that's two times he's lost a full half a point. So he's down a point plus whatever the major deduction is. We're looking at at least a point and a half in deductions. Well, surely he can't start there again. He doesn't know where to start, I don't think. Just a few weeks ago, he was the U.S. national champion. Just a few moments ago, he was just concerned with holding his position. Now he's concerned with holding a spot, any spot on the U.S. Olympic team. And he has a frightening dismount considering what we've just seen. He does that same somersault with a full twist over the top of the bar. What a disaster. I can't believe what's happened to him. Amazing. Dan is there with his brother Dennis. And now he'll have that agonizing wait. But with the mandatory deductions that we've already stated, his standing is in tremendous jeopardy right now. All right, now let's watch. It's obvious that when he releases, he releases the bar too late, and it throws him too far back away from the bar. Now, while it looks like he might be able to re-catch, he's just barely on his fingertips, and if he tried to hang on, it would be even worse. And the score for Hayden is an 8-3. He has missed it. He has missed a spot on the U.S. Olympic team. One of the most disastrous finishes one can remember. 
Dennis Hayden also missing it. There's Dominic Minicucci. He is on the team, and so is Kevin Davis and Wes Suter. They both had nine eights in their last routine on the parallel bars, but I don't know that there's going to be much to say about anything in the Hayden households tonight. There's Scott Johnson. He will have another Olympic chance, along with Charles Lakes, who finished number one. Kevin Davis, Wes Suter, Lance Ringnall, the youngest American gymnast to represent this country since 1968. The sixth and final position on the team, the bubble spot, was won by Dominic Minicucci of Staten Island, New York. And the alternate, the man who will compete if there's an injury to someone else, and there's a good chance of that in this sport, is Tom Schlesinger. All in all, five of the seven members of this team associated in some way with Francis Allen, the coach at Nebraska. Gordon? Well, Al, coming into this competition, we knew that this team had little or no chance of a team medal in the Olympic Games. Without veterans like Dennis and Dan Hayden, that's a certainty. On the upside, however, with young guys like Ringnald and Minacucci here, the future in gymnastics in this country looks very good. The explosion of joy is wide open and visible, while the emptiness of despair will most times be private. Both should be respected as strong feelings known only by those who make the attempt those who keep the Olympic spirit alive.